Sure, I just did on uh, uh, 60 Days of Community Service messing with child support. What? You on child support, man? Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, so you definitely you definitely got to, you know, uh, take care of that, man, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. You got to you got to you got to fight, man. That's the only way to really get them up off you. And I want you to talk about that, man, because, you know, it's an open it's going to be an open discussion, too. OK, yeah. And, uh, you know, if you want to. Yeah, I talk about it most definitely. Yeah, man, it's all about having. A, it's, and, I, and I also try to do a writ. You you try to do a writ. Yeah. With the, uh, with the Supreme Court, Red but Damus, a Red Man Damus, yeah. With the Supreme Court, why would you do a Red Man Damus with the Supreme Court? Asking what authority, what grounds, and what kind, what grounds they had to to force that um the statues. What statues in particular are you referring to? The statue that child support, child support is under. That ain't that ain't gonna work. Did you do that? I see that. I, yeah. I what I did was what I did was I re uh well I took a, I took a, uh the uh application out. I forgot what I I forgot the name of it. it was uh voluntary dismissal. Okay. Yeah, man. See, that's the thing with with child support. You can't just you got to you got to hit them where it hurt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a lot of like like we're like I want to break down where you got the information from to proceed with a writ of mandamus to the Supreme Court against child support. Okay. See what I'm saying? Because you got to realize that the court. The real court, the Article Three court, is an overseer. So somewhere in between, you create a joinder, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Rule Eight of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, where you ways that you can create joinder to where they can enforce that child support on you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Then how to how to uh, get rid of joinder so that you can. Invoke your, your your liberties. You know. Okay. So, so basically, I'm suing it um in a uh, private capacity. Basically, my strategy has been is two ways. You have to uh, attack them. You gotta you gotta cut them twice. You know what I'm saying? You can't just go one way. Like a writ of mandamus is something that probably can be incorporated, but it's not the it's not going to end in the situation. You know what I'm saying? That matter of fact, they're not even going to give it any acknowledgement. No, come and find out, though. Come and find out. You had to send that to the attorney general. The attorney general had to step inside to really make that suit. Or Here, Here's the thing with that, right? This this is why, like, when I when I handle court courts, I do things a certain way where we get and you know, like you got firsthand experience. We got right. results. Anybody case I deal with, we get results because we already did the leg work. So now we can show and prove. We don't have to take a wild guess and say, hey, this is supposed to the attorney general is supposed to do this and that and that and that. And the attorney general ain't never did shit. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So now we need to know how to compel the attorney general to do his job. So that's a whole nother strategy in itself. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, they still have plausible deniability. So even if, even if you, uh, hold on one second. Even if you, uh, you know, try one strategy, you still have to compel them to do their job. Otherwise they won't do it. So yeah, man, we're going to go over a few things about child support. I'm waiting for, uh, Ricky to join now. Let me see if I call Ricky and see if he can get up in here so we can get his testimony. And then me and you can uh, lead in that discussion about the strategies that you are uh, trying to get into.
but yeah, man, this stuff is it, it only get deeper, and the more you learn, the easier it becomes to 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 beat these people. You got to know how they got the court set up, and it and greetings, Ricky. You uh, can you lock lock in uh log in to the meeting? Yes, you just send me an invite. Zoom. I'm on, Zoom. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on the Zoom with Uno right now. Camera. Where your camera? At? For the child support. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, let me get off the phone with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you tuning in, brethren. All right. So this is Rick right here. Back in here. Okay. Yes, sir. Rick right here with the beer, everybody. The man of the half an hour. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what's up with Mike real quick. I really want Mike to be on this call. Let me just call him real quick. See if he's available to lock it in. We're gonna try to give Mike about uh about three minutes to join, and then we're gonna get into the discussion about not one, not two, but three. <laughs> three of them things. You a three time champion in three different weight classes. <laughs> Come on. You're like Steph Curry, man. You gotta, you gotta keep it in your pants, man. Come on down. <laughs> 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 nah, for real. But I know, I know it feel good, man. I know that's a sweet victory, man, because um, you know that type of thing people deal with for eighteen to twenty one years, man. They got to keep suffering from that risk, going to jail, you know, life and limb can't take care of themselves. So it's an ugly business, you know what I'm saying? And um, we cracked the code on that. We definitely did, man. We did. And Charles, where you at, Charles, man? Because it's time it's time for you to put that work in, man. You a veteran. Yeah, I'm right here with you. I'm yeah, right here with you. You a veteran, so you know you shouldn't be <laughs> a for man. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. You're going to have to talk to Rick about that now. Hey, hey that's a long stretch. <laughs> Charles, you a veteran. You know we go way back, man, years. Yeah, you better believe it. Yeah. Oh, you done put in some good work, you know. As far as when you did that situation with them two houses and all that. Oh yeah, with the adverse properties. Yeah, even, even with the uh when they tried to put you in the place and you did that affidavit. Remember they Oh yeah, them? yeah. Yeah. You did that affidavit, they kicked you right out. So did. Yeah, that's how powerful the supreme knowledge is. That's the force right there. Yeah. Uh let me see where Mike at. And uh thanks for tuning in, Scott. I appreciate you, man. Okay, we got, uh, let me see. All right, we're going to go ahead and, uh, 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 we're going to go ahead and get into this conversation about Rick. I really wanted Mike to, uh, I really want Mike to be on this call because he's a part of the reason why everything transpired in your situation, Rick. And, um, you know, y'all friendship made the connection to yep. me. To make it everything possible, let me call Mike one more time. Let me call him one more time. I know he was uh, a little busy with something. Let me put you on speaker. Let me know, Rick. Can you say something to Mike? See if he can hear you. Yeah, Yo, Mike. I can hear you. What you up, can hear him. You good, brother. Can you yeah, hear right. him, Rick? Yeah, I can hear him. Okay. All right. That'll work. I guess we got an improv. Um. So now, um. Rick, right? The the meeting is about you winning those three cases on child support. I want you to explain like how the three cases came about. You know how you how you felt when you when you first got the news that they was putting you on that shit, and you know you start reaching out for your remedy. How you how you learned you know where to go to find your remedy, and how you got your remedy. You know what I'm saying? So basically, um. What, how it transpired when you first, like, you got a letter, they served you, how that happened? Well, yeah, when it first happened, um, it was actually my son's birthday party, and I was there, I just paid for half of that, and I'm with my daughter, and then I, I got her for that whole weekend, so that Monday, you know, I give her back Sunday night, so that Monday, I get served a letter in the mail from, my mom showed me, you know, she was kind of, you know, she she was sad. 
she showed me and I was and I read it and I'm like, damn, I just had my daughter and I did all of this and and I've been getting her and it's just like you just sent me to to court now. Right, right. You said your mom was sad. Yeah, like she knew <laughs> she knew what like what it was because I never got like that before. So like so like she knows how much I do for my kids, you know. Yeah, yeah. But she was kind of. You know, like her face, like showed me, like, wow, what is this? Like, I, I was like, damn, she was, she was kind of upset. Does she know about your victories, though? Yeah, she definitely knows about them. Okay, okay. So yeah, so that's that's how it first happened, and then uh, I, I, I was scared, so I I, I kind of I called the lawyer first. You know, I, I didn't know what else to do. I actually asked my brother. My oldest brother, because he's been through this before, he got put on child support, um, and um, he never texts me back. It's been two years. Mm. Damn. Haven't seen him. I used to work in a barber shop with him for ten years. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen him nothing. But I text him. That's my brother. So I reached out to somebody else I knew, and they gave it to me like that. Somebody's number. It could have been that simple. So I called that person and. They said, yeah, they could talk to me, and uh, it'll be like one, $150 just to talk. Then it'll be $2,500 just, uh, just to put down, and then just to retain them. Who said that? The lawyer? Yeah, the lawyer. Okay, so the lawyer wanted how much to talk? They wanted like $150. And they wanted $2,500 just to retain them. Just to retain them. Now, let me ask you this question. You ever heard of any lawyers getting people off of child support? No. They only they only help you get a better payment. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Never heard of a lawyer getting somebody off of child support, ever. Never. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So, um, so after that, um, some told me, like, you know, I've been hearing about Mike for a long time. Hold up. Can you know, you... we kind of don't talk about things of that nature. You know, we keep things like if we do music, we do music, we're going to smoke. You know what I mean? Things things like that. Right. And uh, yeah. I, I heard a lot about Mike through D. My man, D-Nice. D-Nice, yeah, yeah. It's my dog. And, and me and him used to always talk when he was doing his, his paperwork and everything for his cases. I used to be with him chilling, smoking. He used to tell me these things. You know, that I, I ain't have kids yet, so I really didn't listen to it like that. But I knew what he was saying. So I was like, let me hit Mike up. And then I asked Mike. Mm -hmm. And then we, we talked about it. And then, you know, he he, he, talk, he told me about you and, and he could help me out. No doubt. You know, and then after that, he said, shoot, you know, he wanted to... Uh, I think you guys wanted a, a certain amount, and you guys looked out and said, "You know what? The lawyer going to do it." What amount? What amount, man? Right. You, can, you can say the numbers, man. It's all right. I think it was like five, five thousand for the first and case. For the first one, or five, or five, or something. You said you, you and then you said, <clears throat> and then um, you guys, I told you guys how much the the lawyer wanted just to retain and stuff, and then. And I ain't really have it like that. You guys are like, you know what? We're, we're doing for 25 just for the whole case. Right. And you, you learn, and you learn, we'll mentor you. Like I said, we did 17 for the first one, 1700. Yeah. Okay. And then you, you, you went through with the payment and everything. Yeah, I went through with the payment because I ain't really have it like that, man. Y'all looked out for me at a bad time. You know what I'm saying? And and I received, you know, you guys cooked up that paperwork, man. And, and you, you taught me, you told me to, to watch videos and uh, to to look up certain things. And what I was doing, certain words you guys were saying, maybe you didn't know, but I was writing them down and I would look up the definition of these words and I would I would write them down so I know the meaning of them and when so I, I knew when to use them. Right, right. So how you felt when you saw that first piece of paperwork and you got to read, getting that information, you know, the affidavits, the constitutional question, things like that? Man, I, I read it. I felt I felt great. I felt like, 
you know, like they hide a lot of things from you, you know, a lot of things that Google don't tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like that you guys showed me that is I right? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the things that you can do as 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 presenting yourself. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's crazy. I never knew none of this. I never thought this would be. I knew it would be possible. I knew life wasn't just what they what they what they yeah. said. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew yeah. it's something more to that. All right, so so Rick, you beat that first case, right? You got that dismissal. Yeah. We was all excited. We like, yeah, we got that victory. Then what? About a week or two or a month or something, they came back with your other children with another one, right? Well, the first time that was that was what two years ago. We went through that whole case. That took about from March to September. Uh-huh. Then after that. About, about two months later, you know, I've been having my daughter, having my son, you know, all of that. Everything was good. And then two months later, right before Christmas, like I'll say November after Thanksgiving, I get a letter from both of my baby moms. So that's at the same at the yeah, same like two two days apart. Okay. So like I got one on the second and one on the Fourth, uh-huh. Yep, I got so I was just that was just growing my whole my what whole letters, spirit. What was the letters about though? It it was telling me that I had to go back to court. But for what? <laughs> for I, I man, for for some for child support. I don't know hey, for child support, right? Yeah, for child support, you know. I don't even know why, you know. <laughs> right, right. So I, so I they stressed that, you out again? We say Mike. I, I don't want to change the tone of the conversation real quick, but I just, I wanted it. It's, it's important for people to understand how much you was going through, like the persecution you was going through with this woman, the way she was talking to you, the shit she was texting you, right, yeah. the withholding the kid for all, all the things that men go through. So mm. I just want people to understand, like it's 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 deeper than just the, the child support is one thing, mm-hmm. but the freedom the of the persecution is a whole another thing because that shit could, could really because it start wearing him down to the point it start affecting him in other ways in life because it's like this, this woman is constantly berating him. He doing right by his kids. He doing the right thing. But this woman just keep on berating them, attacking them, and sold him. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I just wanted yeah, to like, like as well. To touch on to touch on that, he's definitely right. You know, like I, I try, you know, right. try to keep the, keep that out. But he's right to touch on it. You know, like that. It, it was painful. You know, holding my kid for me, and telling me I can't see my kid. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, just just disrespecting me out of nowhere, just telling me, you know, just. That I don't do enough. I, what do you think? Uh, getting more, having more time with your kid is enough. So, so, so basically, yeah. they was using child support against you vindictively. Yeah, like for reasons I don't know, because I take care. He was of my already family. supporting your children. Yeah. So now, with those two other cases, you, you, that one, the last case you took on by yourself, you didn't even have yeah. access. So you yeah. definitely graduated to a courtroom wolf because. You went there by yourself based on the knowledge that you obtained through the papers, you know, and then you went there and got rid of it on your own. Yeah. I mean, Mike helped me a little bit. Mike definitely helped me. Okay. He told me things that I needed. Like I, when I first put my paperwork in, I didn't have an affidavit of service. Okay. But I still told him, um, I forgot what it's called, the law that, that Mike told me that they got to ha- take my paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. And I bring I bring that up and then she took my paperwork. She said, okay, and she stamped it. And then the judge got it. But then when I went to court, the judge said, Well, I can't I read it over. And you know, she she tried to undermine the things that were on the paperwork, which like all, all our rights and everything, like she said this is more federal. The judge right. said this is more federal. You know, and at that point, Mike Mike said afterwards that I it was things I could have said there, but I didn't really like I didn't I didn't expect her to say that. And uh, 
So I, she said, I need an affidavit of service. Then she'll look it over. Mm. So then I, we got another motion. And then um, I got I, I created an affid, uh, affidavit of service. And uh, so by the next court date that I served, I, I had proof that I served her and, you know, everybody else. I ser served the court. Right. And um, did you serve them? Huh? What did you serve? What did you serve them? The constitutional, the notice of constitutional rights and the affidavit and the uh, affidavit of service. Okay. Okay. And when I did that, they took it regular, like they, they didn't, it wasn't no problem then. And, they stamped and, it. And so when you went in the court, because you had to go to court, did you get your dismissals in the court or did they send it to you later after they told you it's dismissed? They sent it to me later. They, they didn't even take me in the court after that. Now that I got the affidavit of service, now once now you I get the paper in, they didn't even have you go to court. No, they, she didn't show up. My baby mom and yeah. the court didn't let me go in the courtroom. Yeah. Dismissed it. They didn't, they told her not to come in or something. But they yeah. kept trying to get me to get the lawyer. They kept having the lawyer next to me, and I said, "Nah, I said I'm good." Yeah, so they you, tried to get you the first time. We, we went in there and we dismissed the lawyer in front of the judge. Mm. These two times, I didn't get the, the, I didn't, they didn't let me do that. They tried to get you to create contract by getting that attorney to make you a ward of the court. Yeah. How, how about that letter? So I denied all of that. Hey, uh, Mike talking about the letter they sent. Go ahead, Mike. Remember the letter he sent when he was apologizing? Oh, yeah, the lawyer. I think he did, didn't he put a prayer in the in the letter or something like that? Damn, they apologized. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a whole letter. Uh, it was a pilot. I, I gotta find it. I, I next time we get on, I'm gonna have everything. But yeah, it was the lawyer. He was a uh, he was apologizing and and everything for the for everything. He probably got a whiff of that paperwork. He said, "Damn, this dude knows some shit." Hey, yeah. But he, I definitely appreciate you sharing that testimony. We want to make it clear that it's not a fluke. You beat three child support cases. Three. Three of them things, man. Back I feel back. like we got to have another one. We got to have <laughs> another one so I can show them joints. Make a push. Show them joints. All right, so look, look, uh, uh, Charles. Charles, brother. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. What you got to do, man, because you on child support, man. You just told me that earlier. Yeah, see, I'm part of it. See, I'm, you know, we don't get at you, though. I'm going to get at you. Okay, I ain't going to put your business out there, but, you know, we, we go ahead and kick it, man, and we go ahead and handle that, man. We ain't going to play. One thing, one thing that helped me, man, is when, like, you know, I play sports and everything, so, like, I, I try to get in the mind of these people. So, like, when I'm looking at the judge in the face, I'm scared as hell. He's saying all of these words, but then I blanked out the words. Level, man, you oh, you you're not... I'm not scared of you. You know what I'm saying? Once I felt that, it helped me get everything out after that. I wasn't scared of no other drugs. I might have been a little shaky maybe or maybe forgot something here and there. But I still made it through way easier than I felt the first time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That helped me just having that presence in there. Like, man, I'm not worried about it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I've been in courtrooms. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Everything these people's doing is based off of, of fraud and fiction, and the only yeah. jurisdiction they have over you is the jurisdiction that you grant them. And so, so they make his tools, fear and anxiety, fraud, fiction, and fear. And, and let me leave this right here. Um, the, the the courts are not Article One courts; they're Article Two courts. So that's like what those uh, gurus be talking about, saying they Article one courts and all that. So anyway, uh, Federal Rule Civil Procedure, Rule 8. This is what you got to know when you're dealing with these courts. Defenses, admissions, and denials. Um, denials. Responding to the substance. A denial must fairly respond to the substance of an allegation. You got to deny these allegations. Uh, six, effect of failing to deny an allegation. Other than one relating to the amount of damages is admitted if a response pleading is required, 
and the allegations is not denied. So they saying if you don't deny them, then you admit them. That's acquiescence. So that's how a lot of people fall into that trap by not denying point for point the allegations when they make charges oh. claims. Go ahead. I said, always oh, you, you never admit to nothing. You got to deny everything. Yeah, you gotta den you gotta definitely deny it. Then they talk about uh remember the Kenmore case, bro, for the traffic thing I had. And we did the denial and they wind up throwing it out. Yeah, of course. We got we got all our cases thrown out. They, they ain't they ain't touching us. So it says affirmative defenses in general, and responding to a pleading, a party must affirmably state any avoidance or affirmative defense, including they got something here, duress. You gotta state that you under duress. When you're saying they force you to come into that court, fraud. You got to state fraud. You got to state failure of consideration. You got to state rest judicata. You got to state statute of limitations. You got to state waiver. It's a lot of latches. All, all of this. Legalities. You got to state all of these things. It's, it's a certain strategy that you use when you're dealing with these courts, man. But I think our time, we got about two minutes left. You got, did you got to do it before? I can't do it. The case got to be open. You you, you got to realize that your right to do this is unalienable. Unalienable. You can do it anytime. You can do it anytime. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So so even if you got convicted, they had you on a death penalty, and you come back and state that, take you out of there. And never sign nothing. Yeah, don't sign nothing, but you can also do a specified signature if you're under duress. There's certain ways yeah. to sign because they just stopped it out in Georgia. They was forcing signatures. If you didn't, if you didn't sign the ticket, they was arresting you. But they not allowed to do that no more. Yeah, they stopped that like about a few months ago, a month or two ago. Wow. Yeah, man. But uh, the email still the same, D. You said what? The email still the same. Yeah, my email is the same. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, 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 Rick, man, uh, Mike, and everybody else, I appreciate y'all tuning in and joining in. I think this call is going to end, man. Respect. Congratulations on the victory, man. And don't yes, forget to college, man. Carry the torch. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. There's more to learn. You already know, brother. All right. Peace to everybody. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, go, All right, y'all right, take care, man. Appreciate All you. Right. <laughs>